and in comes His Holiness. Embraces him, kisses his hand. Fantastic, fantastic gentleman. Say, are you from Egypt? Dr. Nasir says, no, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Meaning that the guy didn't know, or maybe he was expecting somebody from Egypt. So what's the dialogue? He says, you know, you people don't allow to build more, uh, churches in your country. And it happens. Saudi Arabia is the only Muslim country in the world where there is not a church. Only Muslim country in the whole vast world. He said, you people don't allow us to build churches in your country. So, Dr. Nasib, a talented gentleman, a well-witted man, he's telling His Holiness, he's telling His Holiness that you allow us to build mosques in the Vatican? He says, no, I don't mean Makkah and Medina, but in the rest of the country. So, Dr. Nasib said, look, the, to us, the whole of Saudi Arabia is our Vatican. If your Vatican is 10 square miles or 100 square miles, whole of Saudi Arabia is our Vatican, is a holy land for us. In the religious lecture entitled, Islam, the Message of Peace, which was held in Kuala Lumpur on February 21, 1992, Sheikh Ahmed Didat exposed several experiences he had with the Pope at the Vatican. Sheikh Didat revealed that the Pope often invited Muslim figures to communicate under the pretext of dialogue, which in reality, it was only an intervention for the benefit of his religion. Mr. Didat, there is one question here. Now, could you elaborate about your statement in connection with Tunku's dialogue with the Pope? Now, can you come back to the microphone and answer this question? Elaborate that, and perhaps we would like to uh, know more of this, uh, if you have. That is my first question. You can use that microphone. Thanks. Yes. You see, when I came to this beautiful country of yours in 1984, I met the Tunku, and he asked me, Ahmad, that's my name, he says, this dialogue of yours with the Pope, what happened? I says, no, no dialogue took place. You want to know why? I says, no, His Holiness didn't mean the dialogue in the sense which the Quran speaks. The Quran, Allah Ta'ala wants us to have a dialogue with Him with the Christians. Ta'ala, come talk about Allah's unity. He is the one and only Allah that there is. This is what Allah wants us to talk. That we don't associate partners with Him. Talk about that. So, when the, His Holiness was making proclamations, like He's making today, you must see the star, this morning star. He wants to have a dialogue with the Muslims. So, after many years of waiting, I wrote to His Holiness, that I am prepared to come over to the Vatican and ha have a dialogue with His Holiness. Because the Bible says have a dialogue and the Quran says we must have a dialogue. So there was no reply. So I sent him another letter, there was no reply. So I sent him a telegram. His Holiness the Pope, I sent him a telegram. So I get a response telling me that he's prepared to receive me in private, in his secretariat. So I wrote back asking him, how big is your secretariat? Because this is not a private matter. A dialogue with the Muslims is not a private matter between Ahmad Didat and the Pope that I go and enjoy a cup of tea with him and have a nice good time and he gives me a gilt edge Bible as a present and I come and tell the people, I says, you know, I went to the Pope and he gave me tea and he kissed my hands. This is boosting, wanting to boost my ego. What a great guy I am. I said, no, this is not a private matter. The whole Muslim world wants to know. The Christian world wants to know. What are you people talking? So how big is your secretariat? Because three plain loads of Muslims are coming from South Africa alone. Youth from Durban, Johannesburg and Cape Town. And from the Middle East and from the UK. How big is your secretariat? No answer. Again, no answer. Actually, he didn't mean that dialogue. He is telling his people, go and preach to the Muslims. Go and convert them. But he doesn't use the word convert because you're going to react. So the best way is to talk about a dialogue. His, this morning's paper, dialogue. I go to Birmingham delivering a lecture. 
And in that lecture, I meet Dr. Abdullah Nasif of the Rabita. So he's asking me, Ahmad, what happened about your dialogue with the Pope? So I told him, I said, you know, uh, this was just a hoax. He didn't really mean a dialogue in what sense we understand. What Allah wants us to talk about, no, not about that. So he says, you know, he did it to me too. Dr. Nasif, he says, he did it to me. I said, what did he do? He said, he called me for a dialogue and I went. You know, simple people, he said, and I went. And he goes. He said, they made me to wait at the Vatican in a waiting room. After 10 minutes into another higher grade waiting room, after another 10 minutes, still higher grade waiting room, and in comes His Holiness. Embraces him, kisses his hand, fantastic, fantastic gentleman. Say, are you from Egypt? Dr. Nasir says, no, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Meaning that the guy didn't know, or maybe he was expecting somebody from Egypt. So what's the dialogue? He says, you know, you people don't allow us to build more, uh, churches in your country. And it happens. Saudi Arabia is the only Muslim country in the world where there is not a church. Only Muslim country in the whole vast world. He said, you people don't allow us to build churches in your country. So, Dr. Nasif, a talented gentleman, a well-witted man, he's telling His Holiness, he's telling His Holiness that you allow us to build mosques in the Vatican? He says, no, I don't mean Makkah and Medina, but in the rest of the country. So, Dr. Nasir said, look, the, to us, the whole of Saudi Arabia is our Vatican. If your Vatican is 10 square miles or 100 square miles, whole of Saudi Arabia is our Vatican, is a holy land for us. Then, when I come to your country here, Tunku Abdurrahman, Tunku Abdurrahman, he is asking me the same question, and I told him, so he says, Ahmad, the guy did it to me too. I said, what did he do? He said, he called me for a dialogue and I went. When I was around Egypt, he says, I went to the Vatican, to Italy, to the Vatican. And they received me well. Same treatment. First grade of waiting room, second grade higher up, third grade, and in comes the Pope. Charming, charming, kissing your hand, anything he will do. And the dialogue starts. What dialogue? The dialogue is, he says, you know, Tunku, sir, in Sabah, two of our Catholic priests have been caught drug trafficking, dada, and they will die. Can't you intercede with the Sabah government on my behalf? That is the dialogue? No. Allah is telling us to have a dialogue with them on the basis that there is but one Allah, worship Him, don't associate partners with Him, don't take others as lords and patrons other than Allah. So the dialogue with the Tunku was of another kind, the dialogue with the Abdullah Nasi was of another kind, not the type of dialogue that we are talking about come, let us reason together on the worship of the one true God. Thank you, Sheikh Didar. Now if the, the non-Muslim ask what is Islam, what are we supposed, to, how do we answer that question? What if a non-Muslim asks what is Islam? They don't know about Islam. They want to ask you, what is Islam? Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Simple words. Yes, thank you. Islam is a religion of God. There is no such thing as Judaism and there is no such thing as Christianity. Look, don't be shocked. I reason with you. We want to know from Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, if we can meet him, we ask him, O oh Moses, Hazrat Musa, what is your religion? And I assure you, he can never say Judaism, because that is the term, the word he never heard in his life. This term, Judaism, was invented long after Musa alayhi salam. The people around Judea, around Palestine, they, when they saw the children of Judah in Judea, the religion that they practiced, the people from the outside, they said, this is the Judaism, is the religion of the children of Judah in Judea. That's how the name Judaism came about. But Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, if you can ask him, he would tell you that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. That's his definition. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Islam means a religion of total submission to God's will. The religion of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. If we can have the privilege of meeting him at his second coming, ask him, O oh, Isa alayhi salam, what is your religion? 
I do not expect him to say Christianity because he never heard the word Christ, he never heard the word Christian, he never heard the word Christianity. Look, this is all biblical. The first time the word Christian was ever used in the Bible is in the book of Acts at Antioch. The enemies of the followers of Jesus disparagingly they pointed to them saying that these are Christians, meaning the worshippers of Christ. Jesus is not expected to say that I'm a Christian because if he said I'm a Christian, we can ask him what church you belong to. Are you a Jehovah's Witness or a Seventh-day Adventist or a Mennonite or a Mormon? What are you? Are you a Roman Catholic? What are you? We expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Islam means a religion of total submission to the will of God.